diagnose this vehicle uh, this cool eye is having issue you can see all the lights are on and the steering is a bit stiff because the abs light is on and other things so let me scan it and see the actual problem with it so i could know what to do and then from here i don't know because the customer said he was driving and the light came on he parked and when he came back into the car to start it, all the lights were on. So I'll do auto scan and scan the whole vehicle and see the units that I'll be able to communicate with. Wow, I'm not able to communicate with the ABS. And normally Toyota, when the ABS is having issue, the speedometer will not be working and other units also will not be working. And even with this one also, the four gauge is not working properly. So I will scan the whole vehicle and check the report. Then I will know what to do from there. So now it is done scanning. Let me go to the report and see the report that I'm having. So vehicle speed, vehicle speed sensor, vehicle speed sensor, because the ABS is having an issue. So what I'll do lost communication with the brake unit that is the combination meter, which is the instrumental panel and cruise control. So it's reporting about vehicle speed. And EMS, uh, EMPS is also reporting about vehicle speed and battery sensor circuit. Okay, so right now what I'll do is I'll erase all the fault code and see the remaining one, the remaining one in the system. So now I'm done erasing all the fourth code and I couldn't communicate with the ABA. So when I do another auto scan, to still come up with that. So first thing is two things that I can do. It's either I start with my basics, which is the fuses, or I go to the ABS unit, which is easily accessible and check where the communication issue is. And or I go and do a research on my wiring diagram and see the necessary fuse going to the ABS. So I can use the two options, but the cheaper one is going to my wiring diagram and checking the units, uh, the fuses which are accessible, which are available for the ABS. So I'll do that one rather and check all the ABS fuses. So you can see that I'm having all the faults again. Because taking out the ABS socket and testing for power and ground on it isn't a bad idea. I can also do that. Okay, so let me do this to test. The fuse checking will be one. So Toyota has one internal fuse and one external fuse, which is the engine bay and the under the dashboard. So lost communication, lost communication. So now let me check my ABS fuses first, then I'll know what to do. So this is the location of the ABS. So you see that I take the ABS out or I check the fuse here. But what I'll do now is the fuse is quite accessible. accessible. So I'll check the fuses first. So let me pick up a ground then let me check for the ABS fuses and this one it's not all of them that is the ABS fuses so there are some of the ABS fuses that I can't check but okay what I'll do is I'll rather go in for the ABS unit itself then check from there so now that I've taking the ABS fuse out let me test for my powers and after that I'll test for ground also so this is my test light one hand so that means my power in on my wiring diagram these two are my powers and there is one ignition power here the wiring diagram the ignition power is not on so let me switch to power and test my ground and my grounds are working so now 
the ignition one here is the issue. So I'll go and check the fuse, the fuse that supplies power to that one. Then I'll know what to do. So, so when I went and checked the fuses that supplies power to my uh, ABS ignition fuse, it was under the dash on my wiring diagram. So now what I'll do is, um, let me go under it and take the fuse out. So checking my wiring diagram, ignition number two is the one that supplies power to the ABS and the reverse light. So uh, ignition number two is what I'm going to check on this on this part of the fuse. So on this part of the fuse. So let me check ignition number one and number two. So ignition one, one side is on, and let me check the other side. The other side is off. But with this one, one side is on, the other side is on. So that means this fuse is having the issue. So I'll take the fuse out and go and test my ABS circuit again. So I've taken it out. This is the fuse. And uh, with my research, so normally I prefer to do more research on the vehicle before I attack the problem. So now you can see the fuse is blown and this fuse is sharing power with uh, the ABS and the reverse light. So I'm placing in this fuse and go and check the ABS, if the ABS is working now. If the ABS is working then I have to go and check the issue with the reverse light. So those are the two units sharing this fuse. So I'll do that. So let me place in this fuse. So after placing in the fuse now, now it is working. Yeah, and the light comes on. So I'll go and test it on the ABS side and see. Replacing the fuse, um, I have to check if. Okay, sorry for. So that means the pin was on this side. So you can see now my ignition is coming. So the moment I take out the fuse, this ignition pin wouldn't work again. Sorry for the first illustration. So now what I'll do is I'm coming. Let me take out the fuse again and verify. So now that I've turned off the ignition, now you can see there is no light in that pin. So there is the right pin. I think pin two goes to the ABS. So what I'll do now is I've turned off the ignition. I'll fix the ABS unit. I'll fix the ABS unit and go and turn it back on. And go and turn it back on. I'll fix the ABS. So now moment of truth after fixing the fuse now every light is off so now let me see if i'll be able to communicate to the abs and i have to go and check why the fuse got blown and you can see now i'm able to communicate to the abs now i'm able to communicate to the abs so now what i'll do is i'll wait for it to finish Okay, so now I'm done. And now what I have to do is erase all the fourth code and rescan it. So now it's two things. I have to go and examine the reverse bulb or the reverse light because this car has had an accident, a raw impact accident. So now there is no fault. Let me cycle the ignition and rescan it again. This And you can see all the lights are off, the ABS light and everything is off. And you can see there is no fault because it's an accident vehicle. This vehicle had an accident at the rear side, which was the passenger, uh, the driver side. So I'll open the boot and examine that place and see why the problem is occurring or why the fuse got blown. Because now I know 
there is nothing blowing the fuse from the ABS side. So the, the fuse will be blown from the bulb side. So I have to go and check it and see why. And I'm able to communicate with it. So now let me start the vehicle. And all the lights are off, the steering light and everything. The brake light is on because the handbrake light is on. So let me open the boot and go and check it. So you can see it had an accident on the boot. And one funny thing, there is no bulb in this, but there is reverse bulb in this. So that means it could be caused by, so let me remove them. You can see that they've worked on it. So let me check why, and there is no bulb in this reverse thing. So now, oh, okay. So you can see what I'm seeing. So it could be that this thing is touching the metal and it's creating spark. So the moment it touches, then it blows the bulb. So what I'll do now is I'll disconnect it. I'll disconnect it because the holder is not working. And I'll just place it in there. No, I'll tape it to make it secure. Tape it and just place it in there for the client. And then I'll, I'll tell the client about it. Then from there, I'll know what to do or what else to do. So I'll call it a fix. So this is a fix. This is a fix, so I'll tape it and fix it back and tell the client I'm done fixing the vehicle. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more videos.